think I necessarily need to be a painter. It's just weird to say, but I need, I need a, a way to address the internal voice or what, whatever the feeling is that needs, you know, that suggests I need to pursue something that falls within this realm of creation. I think that, you know, that's one of those things where that makes life worth living. You go to work, it's a sacrifice to get something else. Like that's what I want this work to be. Just like an instigator. It's just that little spark that may hit one or two people and be a lot more amazing than honestly than knowing all the details. My earliest interaction with art that I can remember, and it's a pretty distinct one. Um, so my dad, I ran a business, so they had these big rolls of printer paper, like old school, like fat rolls of, you know, eight inch, whatever. And it would, you would unroll from this giant roll. I mean, I don't know how many, like hundreds of feet is, is in, in one of these rolls. And then you'd roll it up. So it was this like super long, in essence, like a narrative kind of illustration. It's very natural for any child, you know, to draw, articulate things with a pencil. You know, I drew most of my life, but I remember pretty vividly at a, at a young age drawing a lot. So I have this output, creative output that I, considered, you know, this is my art. This is the direction my art's gonna go. And there was this sense of expectation and that I was building towards something more and more and more. And it, it, it felt much more like a linear path. And so I went to school. After a couple years out of school, I moved to Asheville to pursue it seriously and professionally. And I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I kind of had to pursue it professionally because I'm a one trick pony and I have no other job skills that anyone would actually pay me to employ. The problem with that mindset was that I had changed and my work hadn't changed. I think the most critical moment was recognizing that I was not happy with what I was doing. And I'd probably been lying to myself for a decent amount of time. And I thought to myself, like, I've either not worked hard enough, um, or I've just done it completely wrong. I've lost the plot. And now I'm in this position where I've been doing art in a certain way and I don't know how to do anything else. I don't have any other inspirations. This inspiration is not really here anymore. So all this heavy stuff came down. Internalizing all this and I basically decided the dream is over and now is the time to, you know, bite the bullet and apply myself in some different way. You know, I was selling my existing work and basically floundering, thinking like, what am I gonna do? I didn't tell my wife I'd quit. It's not like me to like kind of make a big scene of it, um, even though internally it was a big thing. And then this one night I had a terrible anxious night of sleep and started to kind of formulate a different approach to my creative life. Middle of the night, March 21st, 2011. I wrote it down at 3.59 in the morning. I identified that simple things like I love illustration. You know, I like to paint. I also like to draw. I like line work. I like all these things. I'm like, well, they're gonna, they're gonna coexist. That was kind of a, a plan to do something that I felt was honest. And it wasn't, I wasn't like going to bed with this calculated or strategic approach to like find my voice again or anything like that. All these emotional, impulsive things that I'm thinking of while I'm in and out of sleep for hours in the middle of the night are leading me in this direction. That was the kind of big seismic activity that ended up um, affecting, you know, my whole life. But my, my, you know, you know, starting from my work. So my work has a, I've been told, <laughs> and I agree, as a primitive. There's a primitive component to my work that um, I even consider the animals now like kind of totemic. 
they are they had this they, they still have this really unique role because they function as so many different things i think initially i recognized that i've all, i've always had a strong connection to animals animals have featured in my work but they were they were um this component that would allow me to bridge this gap from what I did know to this like weird thing that was going to be hopefully me finding my voice. Essentially my process and my work consists of creating these non-objective black and white paintings as a foundation. When I explain my work process, a lot of times I joke, I'm like, there's two steps, like black and white and then the other stuff, the color, the animal, all this. So the structure, is in essence um, allowing me to work with as limited amount of structure as possible. And once that's done, I basically hit the reset button and, and I just live with them for however long it takes to have a connection with and when essentially I'm looking for an animal form. The animal then is more of a, um, a thing that I can reference and allow me to come back to reality when needed, but also much more importantly to me and what is the main significance of the animals in general is they're symbolic of this idea of instinct, the idea that um, we possess an identity inherently our own, kind of satisfies my, my ego and also my sense of that I am just, you know, one little person operating in the existence of potentially like infinity and this is just a blip. I can I can deal with both by, you know, speaking to both of those in my work. I hope my art definitely evokes some sense of willingness to be vulnerable or the sense that say my name is lost, my, my identity is lost, and this, and this work exists by itself, I would, I guess, hope that people would assume that whoever created it was willing to take a risk and or was curious enough to explore something that they didn't fully understand.